Um, so my name is Joe Klein. I use they, them, or he, him pronouns, and I am the GIS or Geographic Information Systems and Data Visualization Librarian at UNCG University Libraries. Um, the UNCG Libraries came up with the idea to create a series of webinars for the UNCG community on research and applications, um, and this webinar is one of those, so welcome. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG Libraries resources and research tools. These 30-minute webinars are going to be recorded in Zoom meetings, where we are now, and then placed on the library webpage through YouTube, where they will be closed captioned. Um, so this page that I'm linking in the chat real quick will also contain other applicable links and presentation materials from these webinars. So now for some logistics. Um, attendees are muted on entry. Um, please remain muted during the presentation, but feel free to turn your microphone back on by clicking the, I believe it's a microphone icon on the lower left of your Zoom window. Um, at the end of the webinar, if you wanna participate in conversation and Q&A. Um, if you don't have a microphone, you're also welcome to participate in the chat. Um, if you have questions throughout the webinar or at the end, please put them in the chat and uh, my lovely co-host Amy is gonna track those questions while I present. Um, this recording does eventually go on YouTube, so please keep your camera off if you don't want to be featured in the recording. Um, if there are technical issues, like if the audio stops working or if the slides freeze at any point, um, feel free to pop that in the chat or email Amy. Um, and Amy, if you could type your email into the chat for me, um, and she'll help guide you through some solutions to those. Um, the worst case scenario, please remember that the session is being recorded, so you'll get this um, later. Before I begin, does anybody have any questions? And if you're still typing a question, feel free to continue typing and I'll come back to you. So um, this presentation is a part of GIS Day. So I want to do my quick spiel about GIS Day, um, which is an annual event which was started by S3, which is the company behind ArcGIS software, kind of the leading GIS software. Um, so this event was started in 1999 to recognize that GIS software and to unite the geospatial community in a global movement of collaboration, sharing, and education. At UNCG, GIS Day is an opportunity to share the work that we do with GIS um, or geographic information systems, and also to encourage others to explore how they can use these systems in their own work. So later this afternoon, there's going to be a panel and Q&A of UNCG students, staff, and faculty who use GIS. Panelists will show us some of the projects they've done using GIS, tell us how they got into this kind of work, and then answer some audience questions. We also have a geocaching challenge going on. So I have hidden three containers around uh, campus. So these containers are called geocaches. The goal of the challenge is to find these geocaches using their coordinates. Um, that's going on until November 21st at 1 p.m. And then after that, the geocaches are going to be live, hopefully forever, on geocaching.com. But that website link here is not active yet. Um, you can register for both of these events. Um, at go.uncg.edu slash GIS day, which I've just popped into the chat, um, as well as learn more about GIS at UNCG, but I'm going to cover some of that today too. So let's get started. What is GIS? There's two definitions kind of wrapped up within the term GIS. I've already kind of mentioned one of them. So geographic information systems, a GIS, as you'll see it referred to, um, so AGIS, or a geographic information system, is a computer system used to map, analyze, or explore data linked to a place or a location, also called geospatial or spatial data. Um, GIS can also refer to geographic information science, not systems, um, which is the more general study of geographic information concepts, including geospatial mapping, analysis, and or that exploration using geographic information systems. Um, so this can get kind of confusing. There's two definitions wrapped up in the same term. Um, basically, when we are talking about GIS, or when we use GIS, we're talking about putting data about places onto a digital map so that we can analyze or explore them and explore the real world in a digital environment. For example, we can use GIS to find the quickest route from point A to point B. So a lot of people do this using Google Maps. If you, if you have used Google Maps or Apple Maps, you have used an application of GIS. Um, we can summarize how much people pay in rent in different places, for example. So looking at the median gross rent um, in dollars from a library database called Simply Analytics, which I'll talk about. 
or we could even estimate what areas might be impacted by a flooding river or stream. So here's the North Buffalo Creek and some of the houses that may be flooded um, if it gets flooded like it did a couple years ago, um, which I've pulled from an EPA tool called EnviroAtlas. All right, so I've got two questions for you. So there's, I wanna say five of you here. I know some of you already, um, Suzanne, for example, I know you're from the library. Um, but if you could go to this URL, I'd love to learn a little bit more about y'all. Present this question here. All right. So first of all, I want to see what college or school you're in. So I see someone's from the Bryan School of Business and Economics, none of the above. Sorry about that. Um, got two folks from Bryan School of Business and Economics. Um, and if that link in the, or in the uh, chat doesn't work, you can also go to menti.com and use that code at the top of the screen here. We've got a school of education person. I'm trying to count. College of Arts and Sciences. So we have one College of Arts and Sciences, two College of Arts and Sciences. Um, so this goes into my next question. Um, we have only got two of you and you've already answered. So um, I'm very much interested in the rest of the Department of Schools and Colleges as well, but I know the College of Arts and Sciences specifically um, encompasses a lot of different areas and disciplines and things, including geography and math and computer science, and then a lot of the more arts like um, uh, 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 interior architecture and programs like that. So I wanted to get a little uh, better of a feel for what areas you're from and how GIS might be applicable to you. Um, so I see communication studies, English, and then a different college or school here. Um, I also put informatics and analytics in here, but I don't recognize any folks from there, even though they're technically not in the College of Arts and Sciences, because they do overlap with GIS a lot. All right, cool. So English communication studies, we've also got Brand School of Business and other um, schools and colleges. So back to the presentation, the reason I ask is because um, GIS is most commonly associated with geography. Um, so I'm the Geography, Environment, and Sustainability Library Liaison. So I help them with their research and support in finding resources for instruction and research. Um, it is most commonly associated with geography because geography is the study of place. It's an integral part of geographic information science or systems. But GIS can also be used across disciplines in many different types of projects. So for example, a lot of folks, especially outside of geography or in the arts and humanities or even social sciences, will use uh, GIS to display geographic information and tell a story about a place using something called story maps. So these are some examples of something called ArcGIS story maps, which is a tool for creating these stories about places. Um, you'll see some examples like the voices of the Grand Canyon, looking at some tribes um, from the Grand Canyon area. We've got things like exploring New York City's vibrant street art scene um, and a bunch of other you know, topics that might be interesting um, for folks who don't necessarily want to delve into super intense GIS uh, analysis. All right, so what tools are available? I've kind of covered the definition of GIS, some examples of how we use it. I haven't really gone super in depth into different examples just because there's so many. Um, and I would much rather show you all a sampling of the tools that are available for you to use and how you can get started with them. So there's a lot of tools. Um, it can be kind of overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out with GIS, if you're not quite sure how it can be applicable to your research or your work. Um, if you ever need help with picking a tool or just, you know, exploring tools, contact me. So I've got my contact information at the end of this presentation or contact your librarian as well. So each academic department has a library liaison um, or a librarian for their area, um, and they can help hook you up with a mapping tool or help you get in touch with me to talk about a mapping tool and things you wanna do with your project. So I'm gonna start with kind of the, not easy ones necessarily, but the ones that are gonna be the most helpful for entry level GIS work if you're just getting started with it. Um, so I'm going to start with the library databases. These are library databases that we subscribe to that have GIS kind of functionalities or features. Um, so these are primarily tools for discovering and comparing statistics and for generating publication ready maps of existing data sets. So they have a lot of data sets compiled in these databases. You pick one, it slaps it up on a map, and then you can do some basic um, analysis or exploration of them on the map. 
So there's not a lot of complicated analysis or editing functionality with these databases. Um, although Data Planet does have a variable calculator, so you can look at different variables, maybe you find, you know, median income and then do some per capita calculations and then get your own uh, calculation from that. So Simply Analytics is where you're going to discover and map demographic, consumer spending, um, psychographic and business data. So it's very centered towards business folks. Um, and actually, uh, you guys over in the Bryan School of Business um, help us fund that database, so thank you. Um, Policy Map is kind of similar to Simply Analytics, especially in how the user interface works, but it's got more emphasis on city and urban planning, um, sociology and other factors in policy. Um, so a lot of folks in public policy, um, a lot of environment folks might be interested in that in education in uh, lots of other different types of things will be interested in policy map. Social Explorer is primarily focused on US demographic data um, and it looks at uh, that data over time or over place. So you can compare different regions or areas. So for example, Orange County versus Guilford County or North Carolina versus South Carolina. Um, they also have some international data, which is pretty cool too. Um, and they're organized into themes. And then finally, Data Planet, which is a statistical analysis and discovery tool for social science researchers. It has a mapping option, but it is not primarily a mapping tool like these other three. Um, it, I think, starts out with a, a kind of usually a bar chart or a line graph. And then there's a mapping option if you want to explore things on the map. So you can uh, access all four of these databases from the library A to Z databases page. And I'll copy that link into the chat. But you can also go back to these slides and view these links later. Um, so we get access to these through UNCG through the library or through the Brand School of Business for Simply Analytics. So you'll have to go through the library website in order for it to tell the computer to log you in and get access that way. All right, some more easy entry tools. So I definitely recommend starting with those library databases so that you can you know, play around and see what GIS is and how the buttons work and what all the different features are called. Um, but here are some more um, extra tools, I guess. So these are tools for exploring and practicing some basic mapping and geospatial data concepts outside of a library database. Um, we've got Data Wrapper, so it is free. You don't need an account, which is why I really like it. Um, and it's also a point and click tool. So there are buttons that will say the thing that you need to do and you click it and it'll do the thing. You don't have to do any command line coding um, or any uh, kind of complicated settings or things that you might with other GIS tools. Um, it's for creating basic interactive maps for publications or presentations. So you'll see a lot of data wrapper type maps for things like election summaries on blogs or on news websites or news blogs, especially. Um, so they look really polished and nice and pretty, and it walks you through the process of creating a map. You've got Google Earth Pro. Um, so if you've ever used Google Earth, it pops up a globe on your screen. Um, you can create geospatial data, um, so points on the map or on the globe, and you can view satellite imagery in Google's places data. So Google has a lot of satellite imagery. They've got a lot of places from Google Maps with like reviews and other information. So you can use all of that within Google Earth Pro. It is also free, but it takes up a lot of space or processing power, especially if you download the software version of it. Um, I can't use the version that's in the browser because it will freeze my browser. Um, so it you might need a little bit more of an overpowered computer in order to use that because it has that 3D globe, which takes up a lot more processing power. And then the third one here is going to be Google Maps. Through the My Maps feature, you can create and share maps, again, with that Google Places data or with their satellite imagery, um, or you can add your own data um, with some customization options. So for example, we've got a map when a new librarian starts, um, we can share the, this Google Map with them, and it's got all of the locations that we think are cool to visit. Um, or helpful, so like doctor's offices, grocery stores, you know, cool cafes and things around campus. Um, and we created that in Google My Maps or Google Maps. All right, I'm gonna skip from the easy entry into the, what some would consider more difficult programming tools. Um, so it all just depends on what your experience is with, what you already know. So this might actually be easier for some folks than the other tools I've already mentioned. Um, if they already know command line and programming. So especially the computer science folks tend to gravitate towards these first. Um, so these are free open source code-based tools for data analysis and visualization. They were not originally created for GIS, but they can be extended to do GIS stuff. Um, so we've got R, which is a command line. You're basically typing in a code in a line and pressing enter, and it'll do the thing. 
And then our studio is the graphic user interface or the, uh, I forget what IDE stands for, but something environment, um, which gives you the point and click buttons that you can click on instead of doing command line. Um, so this is a programming language or software for statistical computing and graphics. Again, it wasn't created for GIS, but you can extend it to do geospatial work using some packages like SP, SF, and GGMAP. Um, so if you already know how to use R, if you're going to be doing statistical computing in R, you might start here instead of with the other GIS tools. Then there is Python, which is a programming language. I like to think it's similar to R. It does have its differences. Um, it's less focused on statistics. R is very statistics heavy. Python is a lot more um, friendly towards visualization. So creating charts and graphs and maps. Um, again, libraries and packages can extend it to include geospatial work and geospatial data. Um, you can download both of these for free. They're both free programs. Um, you can also access them via the MyCloud, um, so the virtual desktop that UNCG has set up through ITS, or the App Catalog if you're on a uh, campus computer like I am. Um, so you can download both of these and access them for free. All right, do I have any questions about those two or three things? <laughs> and if you're typing, go ahead and keep typing. I'll move on to the next slide, but then I can come back to your question. All right, so I've covered the easy ones or the entry level library databases, some easy tools that are kind of point and click and they'll guide you through and then the programming code heavy tools. Now I'm gonna go on to kind of the standards. So ArcGIS is the main GIS software. I already mentioned it as part of um, GIS Day. S3 is the company that has published or created ArcGIS and made it available. Um, so ArcGIS is what I call a full GIS suite. It will let you do anything you could possibly do just about with GIS. Whereas the other tools I've talked about will let you do some aspects of GIS. So maybe you can create a map, but you can't analyze data on it. Or maybe you can edit and create data, but you can't publish a nice pretty map. Um, ArcGIS will let you do all of the things. So the main ones you're going to see are ArcGIS Desktop, which includes these four programs here. So if you go to the ITS website or the app catalog and you download ArcGIS Desktop, you're going to get these four. There is also ArcGIS Pro, which is technically a part of ArcGIS Desktop, but in the ITS app cat, it is called ArcGIS Pro. Um, so this is their newer version of ArcGIS, which has the same functionality as these four on the left, um, combined into one tool. So instead of having to have four different programs, you just have the one. Um, it also has some extra online functionality and other features, which is pretty handy if you're going to be sharing stuff online um, or making like interactive published maps too. There's also ArcGIS Online, which is the online version of ArcGIS. It's got pretty much similar features as ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Desktop, um, but it is online and maybe some features are a little bit more simple because you use it in your browser. Um, Story Maps or ArcGIS Story Maps is the newest version of that, um, is that tool that I mentioned earlier where you can create a map that tells a story. So a story about a journey or a place, uh, maybe for example, a journey that somebody takes across the United States um, or you know, looking at I want to say like breweries in North Carolina, you could do a story map for that. Um, there's two versions of story maps you'll see. There's ArcGIS story maps, the newer one. It's a lot more fancy and pretty and works a lot better, I think. And then there's the classic story maps, which is kind of a, a cohort of a bunch of different builders that you have to pick which one you want to use first. So um, if you're just playing around with it, definitely start with ArcGIS story maps, see if you like it, and then you can look at the different tools available. Um, some of these you'll need accounts for, some of them you don't, and then some of them you can access in different ways. So they're available through the app catalog from ITS, um, or you can contact James Nelson, who I want to say is the GIS coordinator um, for the geographic geography environment sustainability department. Um, or you can contact me and I can put you in touch with him. So there are free public accounts for these tools that need accounts. There are free public accounts institutional account, so UNCG does have one which is managed through the GES department. And then there are uh, ArcGIS for personal or ArcGIS for student use licenses, um, which you pay for independently. And I have a breakdown of what those accounts are and which ones you might need for later on. Uh, finally, some free alternative tools. Uh, QGIS, formerly known as Quantum GIS, instead of ArcGIS Pro or Desktop. So, QGIS is a free open source tool. So uh, it has most of the same features as ArcGIS Desktop. 
Um, you can create maps, edit maps, share the maps. Um, and then there are plugins which extend functionality too to make it basically the same as ArcGIS Pro depending on the plugin or the feature that you need. Um, a pro is anybody in the community can contribute plugins. It is open source, um, but that is also one of the cons with QGIS is some of those plugins don't work as well as the ArcGIS Pro or desktop because some people contribute them for free. They're not as published or polished. Um, and you'll have to vet them a little bit better too, just like a Firefox uh, plugin or uh, add-on or an app that you can download to your phone. So you have to do some vetting um, to make sure the plugin's gonna work and that it's not malware, for example. Um, I used QGIS as a graduate student. It's a great tool for graduate students to learn. Um, there's a big community, so there's a lot of tutorials and blog posts and forums out there for how to use it. Um, and best part is it is free and you'll have access to it after you graduate if you are a graduate student, um, because you will lose access to ArcGIS Pro through UNCG, but you won't lose access to QGIS. Um, Story Maps, or Story Map JS, excuse me. Um, is an alternative to ArcGIS Story Maps. So you can use ArcGIS Story Maps with a free public account, but Story Map JS is a little bit easier to get into. There's a lot more point and click options, um, or it's a lot uh, more guided process to make a Story Map using Story Map JS. And it looks polished and really nice and publication ready. It has limited customization options, unless you know JavaScript and how to publish things to servers, which I'm not as familiar with. Um, and it integrates with Google Sheets, which we do have access to with our UNCG email addresses. So if you've got a Google Sheet with data or a CSV file with data in it, you can import that into StoryMap.js and create a really pretty story map, um, which is interactive and you can pan through um, basically points on the map. All right. So that's a lot. Um, do I have any questions about the tools? And I'm reaching the end here. So if you do have questions, I can always come back to them too. Um, so that's a lot of tools. It can be very overwhelming. Um, how do you even get started with it? Um, step one for a lot of you might be to contact me. So you're always welcome to contact me. Again, my contact info is at the end of this presentation. Um, you can schedule a consultation with me and I can help walk through some of these tools, what you might wanna do with them, what information or data you have to work with um, and some resources for you to get started. But I'm going to highlight a couple, starting with um, five steps that you can kind of start with even before you meet with me, um, which I usually take people through when I do a consultation too. Um, so step one is to collect your data, whether you are collecting your own data or finding data that's already published online or somewhere else. Step two is to identify what you want to do with that data. So are you creating a story map to tell a story about it? Are you calculating and analyzing statistics about it? Are you marking locations on a map for a poster or you know, a book chapter, or are you doing something else with it? So identify what you wanna do. You don't necessarily have to know all the things that you could do possibly with these tools. Just get an idea for what you wanna do in a best case scenario. In the perfect world, what would your map look like? What would you do with this data? Step three is to determine the needs and wants for your project. So you might have to do some processing of your data in order to place it on the digital map. So if you've got addresses, for example, you might have to translate those into coordinates in order for the computer to be able to read them. Um, you wanna think about whether you're going to be publishing a live or interactive map to a website and how you're gonna publish it that, are you gonna embed it? Um, is there something you can do with HTML in the back end if you're familiar with how to do that? Um, or uh, you know, if, if it's a Google site, you can't really embed things easily into that. Um, are you gonna be able to work or will you have to work with a specific file format? So if you've got a CSV file, will you have to translate that into a different file format um, or do something else with it? So once you determine needs and wants for your project, then you can go explore tools, find a tool or multiple tools that fit your needs. Um, it helps, sometimes you'll find multiple tools that will fit your needs, but maybe not all of the wants that you wanna do with your project. And sometimes there's really only one tool that will work. Um, there's so many different tools out there too. So um, it's really just the luck of the draw of what you're trying to do with your data. And then finally, step five is to learn the tool. I've got this in quotes here because this is much easier said than done. Um, it's hard to know what you don't know, especially if you're just starting out with GIS. And there's so many resources and learning tutorials and blogs and websites about learning GIS that it can be overwhelming to narrow it down. Um, so you're always welcome again to contact me and I can help you find uh, a resource that works for you and your specific project. So 
finding a tool or multiple tools might look like this. So I'm coming back to the ArcGIS licensed content, um, whether you need an account or not to use you know, ArcGIS Desktop, ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Online, and the various different tools in the ArcGIS suite. Um, so working through a decision tree like this can be helpful. So would you like to share or publish your content for other UNCG ArcGIS users to use? Um, if you want to share your content with other UNCG people, or if you're going to be using data from other UNCG people who use GIS, um, you're going to need an institutional account. So that is run through the geography department, and you'll contact myself and James Nelson um, or me, and I can put you in touch with Jim um, to get that account set up so that you can share that information within the UNCG organization. If you don't have to do that, if that's not a need for you, um, think about whether you're going to need any online features like story maps or sharing live or interactive maps. If you don't have to do any of the online stuff, then you don't need an account. You can just use ArcGIS Desktop, which you can use through MyCloud or download from the ITS site. Um, so that is a good one to start with if you know you're not going to need online stuff um, or to share content. If you will need some online features, um, you can create a free public account on ArcGIS. I want to say ArcGISonline.com or search ArcGIS public account or contact me and I can help you. Um, and then try out ArcGIS Online or Story Maps with that free public account. The free public account won't have access to as many features as a paid account will or what we call a licensed account. Um, so if you need more features, if there are features grayed out that you want to try, um, you can purchase an ArcGIS for personal use or for student use license, which I believe they're both $100 per year. It can get pretty expensive depending on what features you want to add, though. Um, so if that's not an option for you, if you don't have a grant with funds available to make an account, um, you can contact myself and Jim to uh, do that. Uh, thank you for joining us, Martin. All right. I think one last thing, some resources that you can start with. Um, if you're just starting out with GIS, I recommend starting with guides aimed at beginners, which explain GIS concepts before or as they delve into the tools. Um, a lot of terms and concepts are transferable across tools, so things like joining data or merging data. Um, as you learn, you'll find keywords that can help you search for more specific tutorials and resources. So um, it can also help to find a tutorial or do something close to what you'd like to do. Um, work through it and then take the final product from that tutorial and then adapt it to fit your product or your project. So don't start from scratch, you know, find an existing example and tweak it to match what you want to do. Um, so I've got some general GIS resources here. Um, when you get the slides later on in the follow up email, you can click on these URLs to get to these. So I have a GIS resource guide from the university libraries with um, links to tools, tutorials and other resources. There's a GIS 101 kind of page from GIS Lounge, which is a lot of great introductory and fun content. And they've also got a big community of GIS users who are just starting out too. Um, there's a page uh, called GIS Mapping, Types of Interactive Maps and Applications. So I didn't really go over um, or into the types of maps that are available or the types of applications for GIS other than like, you know, routing directions and things like that. So this page can kind of cover some of those, you know, what is a heat map? What is a chloroplast map? Things like that. Um, ArcGIS has a lot of free resources through S3 Academy and through Learn ArcGIS. Um, you'll have to select the free options, um, and some of them are tailored specifically to ArcGIS products, but some of them are more general GIS, which is very helpful too. And then finally, you can search online or in the library catalog. So search for things like training manual, GIS, GIS tutorial, GIS workbook is a really common one too, um, and especially if you want to use a specific tool. So you could do QGIS workbook. Our workbook with GIS, um, and you will find a lot of resources for that as well. All right. Um, before we move into questions, actually, I have a follow up form, which I'm going to paste into the chat. So let us know how this webinar went. There's only so much I can fit within 30 minutes, unfortunately. Um, so just kind of a taste of GIS. So let us know how it went using that form that I just pasted in the chat. Um, and then we do have another webinar that's coming up on December 8th at 12 p.m. called Following Science from News Back to Research by Leah Leninger. I've never said her last name out loud before. Um, you can sign up and find details about that at that uh, research applications link that I've just pasted in the chat as well. Um, here's my contact information. Um, you can schedule an appointment with me at go.uncg.edu slash joeklein-appt. Um, or email me if you have any questions about GIS or how you can use it for your projects. And now I can move on if you have any questions. 
I would love to hear. And you're also welcome to unmute and ask your question if you would like to do that. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. I didn't see you join. <laughs> All right. Thanks, y'all. Um, I think we're safe to end it. If there are no questions, again, feel free to email me with that question if you have one. All right.